Imagine opening a mysterious package and seeing a thick white fog spilling out like it's straight from a mad scientist's lab. You've probably seen it in movie scenes at Halloween parties or keeping things cold during shipping. It looks super cool and almost supernatural. But what's actually going on here? How can something be so cold it creates its own fog? Today, we're diving into the fascinating science behind dry ice, how it works, how it's made, and why it behaves so differently from regular ice. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. Despite the name, dry ice isn't made from water at all. It's actually solid carbon dioxide, CO2, the same gas that you breathe out when you exhale. At room temperature, carbon dioxide is invisible and floats around in the air. But under certain conditions, you can compress and cool it until it becomes a solid. That solid form is what we call dry ice. And why dry? Because unlike regular ice, it doesn't melt into a liquid. When it warms up, it skips the liquid phase entirely and goes straight from a solid to a gas. This process is called sublimation, and it's the key to everything that makes dry ice so unique and useful. So how do we even get solid carbon dioxide? It's not like you can just stick CO2 in a home freezer and wait. Carbon dioxide only becomes a solid at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius, 109.3 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way colder than any household freezer. To make dry ice, factories start by collecting carbon dioxide gas, often as a byproduct from other industrial processes. That gas is compressed under high pressure until it becomes a liquid. Then, when that liquid CO2 is suddenly released into normal atmospheric pressure, it rapidly expands and cools itself down. This causes part of it to freeze instantly into tiny snow-like flakes of solid carbon dioxide. Those flakes are then pressed together into dense blocks or pellets, and just like that, you've got dry ice ready to ship out. Here's where dry ice really stands apart from your everyday ice cubes. Regular ice, made of water, melts when it gets warmer. It turns from a solid into a liquid, then eventually into vapor if it gets hot enough. But dry ice completely skips the liquid step. Instead, when it warms up past minus 78.5 degrees Celsius, it sublimates directly into CO2 gas. That's why you don't get puddles when dry ice melts. The solid simply shrinks away and disappears into the air. If dry ice just turns straight into gas, why do we see those thick white clouds when it's dropped into water or left out in the air? Here's the trick. The fog isn't carbon dioxide gas. It's actually tiny droplets of water. When dry ice is exposed to warmer surroundings, it sublimates very quickly. This sudden rush of extremely cold CO2 gas cools the air and moisture around it so fast that the water vapor condenses into a mist. That mist is what creates the spooky rolling fog effect. It's the same basic idea as seeing your breath on a cold day. Warm moisture meets cold air and turns into visible droplets. If you've ever dropped dry ice into warm water, you know how intense that fog becomes. The hot water makes the dry ice sublimate even faster, releasing more cold gas, which chills the air which creates even more fog. It's a chain reaction of cold and condensation, a kind of visual magic trick powered purely by physics. Dry ice is so cold because of its extremely low sublimation temperature. At minus 78.5 degrees Celsius, it's more than three times colder than your freezer. This is why handling it directly can give you instant frostbite-like burns. 
Your skin's moisture freezes on contact, causing damage just like touching a super cold metal surface. That's why people always use insulated gloves or tongs when working with dry ice. It's not toxic to touch, but it is dangerously cold. Because of this intense cold, dry ice is incredibly useful for keeping things frozen during shipping, especially perishable food, biological samples, or even certain medical supplies. Unlike regular ice, it doesn't add water weight and it won't turn into a soggy mess. As it sublimates, it just becomes gas and disappears. As cool as dry ice is, it can also be dangerous if used carelessly. Remember, it's constantly turning into carbon dioxide gas. If you seal it inside a tight container, the gas has nowhere to escape, and pressure can build up until the container bursts. This can cause powerful explosions, even from small pieces. That's why it's never stored in airtight jars or bottles. Always invented or insulated containers that allow gas to escape safely. There's also the asphyxiation risk. Carbon dioxide gas is heavier than air, so it can build up in enclosed spaces and push out oxygen. In a small, poorly ventilated area, that can become dangerous or even deadly. So whenever people use dry ice, they do it in open, well-ventilated spaces to keep the air safe to breathe. Okay, let's zoom in on the actual science here. Why does dry ice skip the liquid phase in the first place? The answer lies in something called a phase diagram, which maps out the states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, at different temperatures and pressures. For carbon dioxide, there's no way to have liquid at normal atmospheric pressure. At one atmosphere of pressure, the air around us, CO2, will either be gas or solid never liquid. To get liquid CO2, you'd have to increase the pressure to about 5.1 atmospheres. This is known as the triple point, the specific combination of temperature and pressure, where solid liquid and gas can all exist at once. Since our everyday air pressure is way below that, CO2 just jumps directly from solid to gas. That leap is what makes dry ice such an oddball compared to substances like water. Next time you see that rolling white fog spilling from a cauldron or a spooky Halloween punch bowl, you'll know it's not magic at all. It's just science at work. Dry ice might look like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's really just frozen carbon dioxide doing its thing. And the way it goes from solid straight to gas is a perfect reminder of how strange and fascinating the everyday world can be. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.